Well, greetings and welcome to week six of the story. We're on chapter seven in the story itself, The Battle Begins. My name is Pastor Eric, coming to you from Zion Lutheran Church in the narthex here. You can see some flowers behind me in the uh, poster for the women's retreat, which is happening on Saturday, October 22nd. Uh, if you call in today, if you haven't signed up, or if you have a friend that you think you want to bring, if you call in today on Thursday, they can make sure that there is room for you. I think there's about 68, 69 women who will be coming from a lot of different places, most of them from Zion, but about a quarter of them who are friends or neighbors or saw the Facebook post or just want to come and be a part of a women's one-day retreat between 8.30ish and 2.30 in the afternoon. Rooted in love is the theme. Um, if you haven't signed up, there still is room, but call in to church tonight by Thursday night, 541-923-7466. Again, 541-923-7466. We're on The Battle Begins. Joshua is the leader of the people of Israel who took over after Moses. We ended with Moses last night, last week. Joshua is the sixth book of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Moses dies uh, on Mount Nebo after seeing the promised land. At the end of Deuteronomy, Joshua is the next book of the Bible, the sixth book of the Bible. Joshua takes over after Moses. And um, this week, um, and, and every once in a while now, there will be some kind of difficult, kind of challenging weeks to understand what God is up to. Um, the Israelites have a series of battles because there are seven tribes of people, the Ishmaelites, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, a bunch of people are already settled in the Promised Land. And they need to overcome them in order to take the land that God promised to them. So um, the people of Israel, after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, all of the men who went over through the Red Sea 20 years and older all died in that, will, in that wilderness wandering time. There's only two that survived, Joshua and Caleb. We're going to talk about... Caleb in the adult forum on Sunday. Um, Caleb was a tremendously faithful guy, and Joshua was the one who was the leader of the people. Just think of that. All of those people uh, who followed Moses through the Red Sea, all of the men and women over 20, all died while they wandered in the wilderness. So God was about to start a new thing. God's promise that God had made to Abraham 600 years before was going to now turn into reality. Joshua um, had been kind of um, uh, spied out. He spied out the land as a young man. Uh, he came back with the positive report, remember? And instead of Moses listening to Joshua and Caleb, the two spies who gave the positive report, you listen to the 10 negative ones, then they were in wandering in the wilderness for 40 years based on the 40 days that the spies were in the promised land and came back with a negative report. The reason I've, I, I don't know how many times I've repeated that four or five times in the last couple of weeks is because I didn't really even realize that until five, six years ago or so. I mean, there's all these little nuances that you kind of hear and you wonder, well, yeah, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, but how come? Well, it's because of the negative report from those 10 spies. So a new generation of Israelites who had heard the story about the crossing the Red Sea on dry land, now they were experiencing something different as they crossed the River Jordan on their way to the Promised Land. So we talk a little bit about that in the sermon on Sunday, how they got over the Jordan River. And we also talk on Sunday about how they overcame the walls of Jericho, the double walls of Jericho. We'll talk about that on Sunday. They marched around it for six days. The seventh day, they yelled. The walls came a tumbling down. Jericho was destroyed. Rahab the prostitute, we'll talk about her also. 
who hid the two spies in the roof of her brothel. Joshua sent two spies in the, into Jericho to check it out. The men of Jericho were about to find them out. Rahab the prostitute hides them on the roof and says, I, I think they went that way. And so the men of Jericho went that way and she let down the two spies out of her window and they, they rejoined um, Jer J Joshua and uh, the people. And then they marched around and the walls fell down. But um, Rahab the prostitute put a scarlet ribbon outside of her wall a window and said, now, before the walls come tumbling down, you come get me, okay? And so they did. Rahab the Canaanite joins the people of Israel and she is mentioned in the lineage of Jesus in, Math, in the Gospel of Matthew. She is mentioned, she joins, she marries, she joins in the lineage of Jesus the Messiah who would save his people from their sin. We'll talk about that I think on Monday with there's more to the story. So remember at the back of the book of the story there are uh, questions to think about, page 473. And um, uh, you think one of the things that God says to Joshua a number of times in the book of Joshua are the words, be strong and courageous. God calls Joshua to do a new amazing thing and God tells him again and again to be strong and courageous. And even though I'm sure it was a little daunting for Joshua to lead all of those people, he still followed God's call and he was strong and courageous to do what God was asking him to do. Do you ever sense that God is calling you to do something but you don't quite have the strength, you don't really feel courageous to do what God is calling you to do? Joshua is told by God so many times, be strong and courageous. I just love that combination, not just strong, but courageous to embrace and to do what you really feel God is calling you to do. What, what risks, what paths in your life do you think might God be calling you into? And can you be strong and courageous in, in following that? Or are you just going to kind of sit back and watch other people do those strong and courageous things? I think... God calls us to step up in many kind of different ways. And maybe as you listen to the story of Joshua today and on Sunday and Monday at Bell Forum, all that stuff, you'll think, yeah, I need, I need to be strong and courageous. I need to claim that call that God is putting in my life. So there's questions that come up as we go over the next couple of weeks about the annihilation of certain tribes of people. Um, and it challenges our image of God, our New Testament image of God. Old Testament, God is trying to work God's upper story in their lower story and bring the people into the promised land. Nothing's going to stop in God's way. And it's challenging to think about that and to understand it. But I think the more we go through the Old Testament, you'll see that there's a pattern of what God wants to do, and it ends up with Jesus finally coming to save God's people, save us from our sin. So, enjoy reading chapter 7 about Joshua. Come to church on Sunday, the adult forum, take it in on Monday for there's more to the story, and I will see you again. Until then, you take care. Bye-bye.